EA Sports, within the game. Great play call, great pass, great reception. That play had it all. into the summer. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you are as we are off and running on EA Sports. Let's take it in at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They'll be led out by a Heisman runner-up during his college days. It's the versatile Jalen Hurts. We talk so much about how coaches script things, especially on offense, to start a season, to start a game, whatever it is. Could they have scripted a better start in terms of playing? Offensive player of the week in the NFC, and his team won their season over. Absolutely perfect start to the year, but all the talk was, hey, that was week one. Now we got to move forward. Let's do it again in week two. That's what he told his teammates. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. 12 yards on the gain. A great start for this offense. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, 
you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all off season about our season open opponent. And they had a receiver that could shake and fake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. I ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it would have been a different story. Night. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. But Charles, did it seem like to you that maybe they were a little worried about his running prowess there? Because everybody kind of froze when he got outside the pocket, and they were able to throw it for the first down. Absolutely, and you work all week getting ready for a game, and you know that the potential is there for him to run it, but you better take care of those receivers downfield. They can hurt you first. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Hurts with a little pop pass on the jet sweep. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. There are the numbers for Samuel from that game last week. Six catches, 73 yards, and a touchdown. And I'd certainly expect them to use him quite a bit because he runs excellent routes, has good hands, and knows how to get open. From the 40 now on second down, Hurts. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 26. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. They go play action with Hurts. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. And out of bounds right around the 20. Second down at four. The Bucs at 1-0 and on the year following the win in week one. And they've gotten a pretty good deal from the schedule makers as well. Home dates in weeks one and two. And I would believe that they would need to take advantage of that partner because as you can imagine, the road dates will pile up later this season. So this is a great opportunity for them to put some early distance on the rest of the division and create a little bit of a cushion for them for later in the year. Okay. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Hurt sets up to throw it. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. And the ball smacked down on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great effort there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Buccaneers will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Tucker with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it's all finished up for the touchdown by Tampa Bay. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. So here come the Saints now for their first drive. They're led by their quarterback from the University of Alabama, Mac Jones. The drive will start with an option going left. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. And this will wind up as Saints first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. 
Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. Now Jones. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. The numbers in last week's ball game for Robinson. 12 carries, 54 yards. Not a horrendous week last week running the ball, but definitely room for improvement for their numbers. No doubt, they made some slight adjustments to how they're going to call plays this week in hopes they can kick those numbers up a notch. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. Now this defense for the Buccaneers, terrific last week in the season opening victory. And as in any game, takeaways are always a big key. They're always discussed on defense. There's an emphasis there. And they came away with three interceptions in that game. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. Oh, well, they had stopped him for a loss on the run anyway, so they'll be fine there. It's almost a good psychological advantage, isn't it? You created a penalty, and you still couldn't gain yards <laughs> against us. No way we need to take that one. Throwing Jones. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely, as one of the better coaches in the league always tells me. On offense, I want their body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping that one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They will run for the first time with David Montgomery. And yeah, maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25-yard line. The Saints first down there on a gain of 11. From the shotgun now, here's an inside gill. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Coming up on second and seven. Stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, Jones. Under pressure, and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. After one, seven, nothing. The Saints with the football here to begin quarter number two. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right, and this will stay at a seven point game. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. Play action. Here's Hurts. A quick throw, but incomplete. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave them trying to convert on third and nine. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Completes it to Samuel. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. 
I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. A good pick up there, 26 yards. You have to ask the question, where was the hell? Because it's a little surprising to me that he'd find that much room to run this close to the end zone. He doesn't quite get there, but he sets his guys up for the first and goal. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Debo Samuel, a five-yard touchdown. And the Bucs go up by two touchdowns. Tucker now for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14 nothing. So that drive spans five plays. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. Now, early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game, but I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra intrigue. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice, but at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Robinson with another carry. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Four yards to pick up, first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And yeah, they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop this? He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Bryce Hall. Coming away with the interception. Okay, Here's a first and ten at the 14-yard line. Hunt will try going up the middle. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Throwing his hurts. to the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Jalen Hurts, his third touchdown of the game, number nine on the season. And the Buccaneers are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 21-10. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them. And plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Well, see, the, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here, because now you're down.
Chase, and I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. If they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming, pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. He sets to fire deep. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Well, obviously searching for their first touchdown this game, partner. And that quick three and out. That's not going to achieve that at all. Give victory to the secondary there. They brought out tight coverage on that third down snap. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. So here are the Bucs to take over on offense. They were winners last week defeating the New York Giants. They lead this one as well right now as they come up first and 10. To begin the drive, here's a handoff to Hunt. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. There to stop him on the defensive side, Lorenzo Carter. His defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still wanting to move at a nice pace. He lost two there, and it's third down. see what they have drawn up here a little bit behind the line 12 yards needed to gain a first down hurts and the saints pressure gets him brought down for a sack and the defense coming through on third down a loss of seven to bring up fourth just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously, led to a very quick sack. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. And as we check the next-gen stats, that play last And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll send you across state to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have all the stats and all the scores from games going on during another busy Sunday in the National Football League. Jones throwing on first down. In trouble, and he's taken down. T.J. Watt, the all-pro, in there to take him down. There's a lot of discussion in the offseason about him having a big year and getting to the quarterback. They held him without a sack in week one, but how about here? Finally gets his first one of the season. In the offseason, said he changed his diet. Leaner feels so good this year. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. T.J. Watt, that is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. On third down, Robinson. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. Here comes the Saints punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Returnable here from the 38. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. A one more drive here for the Buccaneer offense in this first half. And with great starting field position and a couple of timeouts at their disposal, they'll certainly have the green light here. Oh, 
They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, it hasn't been a banner first half for the defense trying to cover him today, but they'll take that one right there, helping force that incompletion. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Hurts to throw. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. They'll drop the throw. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. On fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on to punt. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit, but first... Well, everyone's eager to resume play here in this Week 2 contest, so we push right through halftime and back at it for the start of quarter three. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Saints going to go on offense first, and they trail here as we begin quarter number three. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. Tackle there by Michael Pierce. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Looking to throw. Jones. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's still as they come up on third down. Back to throw. Jones. Slings this deep from McLaurin. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. It's the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. And the Bucs are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. I think everyone is watching. We're certainly hoping to see things get a little bit better for them in this half. But it was a downright miserable first half that's carried over with an interception to begin the second half. That's a defeated offense right there. And there's still a lot of game left. I don't think that's the last turnover we're going to see today, partner. So the completion good for six yards. And that will bring up second down. Come on, come on. He'll look to throw. Got this complete to the tight end pit. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. 
they don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just scared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. As a coaching staff, you can call just about whatever you want because you understand you have guys who reliably take away those massive shots downfield. You're not as worried about giving up the big one. Oh, he's got his tight end pitch complete. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It doesn't look like this defense found the magic elixir at halftime. This offense was rolling in the first half, and that's continued here in the third quarter. Another big play right there. Again, he'll drop the throw. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. A great play there with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year, as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Charles, I know that you don't put a ton of stock into power rankings and things of that nature, but another score here, and two weeks into the season, this is maybe the most impressive team in the NFL. Would you agree? Well, they've certainly sold me as they've sold you, and I agree with you, no question about it. They won easily last week. They're on their way to another lopsided victory here. They're definitely a team to be reckoned with, and they are serving notice to the rest of the league. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Things, unfortunately, continuing to implode here. The interception he threw on the previous drive, of course, led to the touchdown, and that deficit widening a little bit further. First and 10. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up the touchdown. Back to the ground. This time Montgomery. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. Option. Here's Montgomery. A gain of three, second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Jones throw into the hands of McLaurin. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. On right, first and 10, it's Robinson. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Give to Robinson on the option. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Only five on this play to move the sticks. Jones now from the gun on third down. Looking middle, and that's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 32-yard line. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Off the option, here's Robinson. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pick up of four. Not too many offenses when we turn down long drives, but you're down with them. They've got to pay it off at some points. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And he'll be marked.
start down right at the 20 yard line. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much needed conversion there on third down. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. After the sack on first down, Jones. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. We're making the mistake of the soft receivers, especially the little guys that they're watching here. They're just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. The kick by Pinheiro is good, and that will cut the lead down to three scores at 24. I'm kind of surprised by that, that they kicked the field goal. I guess you get some points, but this deficit third quarter, I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. When you're down that much, kicking a field goal, does it feel a little bit maybe waving the play waving flag? The line, you just want to get that. out of here? Yeah, I, I think you got to go ahead and try and get some bigger points on the board. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time... Tampa. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and ten. Now meanwhile a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. So after the incompletion on first now second and ten. Back to throw here. He's got a man complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. That goes for a gain of 31. Even with a big lead here in the fourth, that still bombs away. And frankly, it's working. Why should they stop? Go ahead and keep firing away and gaining those yards. Hurts throw taken in by Samuel. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. Cole Holcomb proving too much there for the offensive line. He gets the sack. First and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of them. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, things are going to Under pressure, they got him again. Lorenzo Carter in there to drop him and sacks on first and second downs. Now leads to a third and long. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. 
I would expect all of this go, defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Now Justin Tucker's out to try the field goal. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points. They'll take the three, and they've had that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you are going to go. If you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so that you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. They'll look to throw again. And yet again, it's McLaurin. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 28. to throw again. Over the middle, it's complete. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Second and four. Now Jones. And that's complete to Cooks. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, and they ran out of it. That was a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. 61 yards rushing for him now to this point. It's not a huge breakaway at all, but for Stephen Lang, he finishes the game without just a five or six yards per touch. He'll take that every single time. On third and short, they'll try option left. And he's going to be a yard short. Needed four, but got three. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. Desperation time now. Here's Jones. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back. The Bucs offense set to begin their next possession. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They run again with Hunt. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Throw left side complete. That's Payne. And he'll be just shy of the 20 at the 19 as he goes out of bounds. 
And they have the first down with that gain of four yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. All right, second down, right back to Hunt. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. That one looks like he'll throw here. And a big loss here as he's taken down. And what are the whistles for? Timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second at a country mile. Under pressure, and they got to him again. And now we're going to get a timeout. Somewhat pointlessly called with three seconds to go in a game that's already been decided. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's incomplete. He's still throwing to the very end. But now this game is over. So fire the cannons. It's a victory here for Tampa Bay.